In the last video, we visited the Triangle Galaxy, our smallest neighbor in the local group of galaxies. Today, we will visit the largest of them. Hello, welcome to the Astronomina's channel. I am Fabio, and in today's video we will photograph the favorite galaxy of 9 out of 10 amateur astronomers, the Andromeda Galaxy. My fascination with the Andromeda Galaxy started after my first observation of it in an 18-inch telescope. It was the first time that a deep sky object caused that wall effect on me. Since then, the desire to obtain a high-definition color image capable of showing the spiral arms became a true obsession. I confess that this is one of the major reasons that led me to choose a 60mm refractor instead of a larger telescope. With a 60mm aperture telescope, it is possible to fully frame the Andromeda galaxy on a larger camera sensor without the need to create a mosaic. Of course, there are many other deep sky objects that are fantastic for a wide field of view astrophotography. But when it comes to galaxies, Andromeda is an undisputed target. The Andromeda is the largest galaxy of the local group of galaxies has more than 1 trillion stars and is a buried spiral galaxy located about 2.5 million light years away from Earth. It has an apparent magnitude of 3.4, make it one of the brightest deep sky objects in the Messier catalog. The galaxy is also quite wide in the night sky being five times larger than full moon's apparent size. Despite this, its luminosity is a little diffuse, which makes it difficult to see it entirely with the naked eye. In dark sky, it's possible to visualize it as a star shrouded in nebulosity, and is easily observed with binoculars and small telescopes. For the Andromeda galaxy, I will use two or three nights capturing the images, since it is even more at the borders of my horizon, as it appears at 20 degrees and disappears at 25 degrees of altitude, among the three tops on the top of the hill. That leaves me a window of only one hour each night for the captures. Since July, I've been trying to capture a good image of the Andromeda galaxy but I only managed to get good winter conditions during the full moon nights, and this series degraded the color quality of the final images. Now we are in the new moon with open winter and clear skies forecast for the entire weekend. Also, the galaxy is emerging earlier and this greatly decreases the possibility of fog. As I did for the image acquisition of the Triangulum Galaxy, I will use 1200 seconds to be frames, because the telescope will be facing northeast, passing very close to the crest of the hill and three tops, with the mountain rod finishing almost completely horizontally. It is always changed the telescope and counter rate balance. The drawback of photographing objects at low altitude is that, in addition to not rising enough, they remain in favorable positions for only a short period of time. Between locating the galaxy, framing, start the guiding and the acquisition routine, I should expend approximately 10 minutes, leaving me with a little less than an hour for image acquisition on each night. After three nights photographing the Andromeda galaxy, I got 54 images, but unfortunately I had to discard 14 of them, 
due to the satellite trails and clouds. The final image was the result of stacking the best 40 subframes, which totaled 1 hour and 20 minutes of full integration time, and resulted in my best image of Andromeda Galaxy to date. There are objects in the night sky that no matter how many times you observe or photograph, they continue to fascinate us and awaken the desire to always progress and improve. Photographing the Andromeda Galaxy is a real-time travel to the past, as the light captured today was emitted 2.5 million years ago. Maybe that's why it's a, such a fascinating object, being our closest neighbor and yet being so far away. I hope you like the final image of the Andromeda Galaxy, I wish you all clear skies and see you soon.